regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular features of shows. Hello and welcome to Regular Features, the podcast that is exactly the same every single week. My name is Gav Murphy, and this week I'll be bringing you, as I do every single week, the news. And this week I fuck the chess master. My name is Steve Hogarty, the man who fucked the chess master. We're sitting across from each other as we do every single week. And as every single week, we're bringing you the best damn podcast that you've ever heard. We wouldn't bring you anything less than the absolute best. You're listening to 92FM. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous, Gav. It's just me Why? and you. Just as, it feels like Think it, it. it's an interview. It's, we it's, are sitting directly looking at each other's eyes. <laughs> but what job could you possibly ever offer me, Gav? Mm. Also, you, I think you'd be a bit good if you turned up for a job interview and you're like, "Okay, I'm I'm outside." You're like, right? See that scary looking bars? You're going up there, and then a dog tries to bite you. And then they brought you into what is our studio. Because you, not, I mean, it's affectionately known as a studio, but it's essentially a box room. You gave me terrible directions. What? You said turn right at the top of the road. Yeah. And once you, once you go to the bars, yeah. then uh, call me back and I'll tell you what. I'll give you further directions. Yeah. So I was like, bars? I can't see any bars. I was looking for pubs. Oh, I thought you meant like, I meant black bars. Yeah, you meant white pillars. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> bars, as in like... Like prison bars. Yeah, like prison bars. Like walk to the prison bars. Yeah, you need to update your direction, Gav. <laughs> like bars is a... Because you a... wrote me, you were like, oh, you mean pillars? I was like, no, that's insane. Why would I mean There's pillars? three white pillars. <laughs> we're really narrowing down where you live, Gav. Someone oh, yeah, on Street View could, uh, could, could come in and... Or uh, they need to find us those bars. Yeah. Um, but it, there's there's some bars around here. We're in West End. But here we are. We are <laughs> recording in Gav's studio mm. for the first time for regular features. The house that Gav built. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, at the moment, it's not pretty. But hopefully, it'll get prettier. Or I we, think or we'll just move out. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Uh, I've just used your bathroom. Yeah. You've got scented toilet roll now. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? You've changed. No, <laughs> I needed it. To, I needed it to be over a fiver because I needed to buy it from a corner shop because I was coming home late and I knew I needed milk and yeah. toilet roll and I needed to be over a fiver. So I said, "Oh, what's the most expensive toilet roll you got?" Uh, and it just happens to smell nice. It's one that's got a nice smell on it. Yeah, it is nice, although. Um, I'd actually bought it because Clara was like, oh, can you get some, um, what is it, kitchen towel? Because she'd made scotch eggs. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, now that I've made it, we eat nothing but scotch <laughs> eggs. <laughs> well, all the peasants sit around eating their scrambled ones. I won't eat an egg unless it's been deep fried inside some sausage, quite frankly. And I don't think I should have to. Um but I was like, I brought, so I was pissed. I was meant to bring home kitchen roll and I brought home scented toilet roll instead. She was like, not only is this the wrong thing, I physically can't use it because it'll make our food smell like lavender. <laughs> <laughs> the, the great irony of scented toilet paper is um, that there's really only one scent that toilet paper ends up being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it can't sell that. <laughs> They can't sell it like, oh, don't worry, if it smells like shit, it all smells like shit but at the end. When do you ever sniff toilet paper when it doesn't have shit on it? But also, this is the weird thing. I've never I've never gone, oh, do you know what? Um sorry, I just saw that was looping vicariously around your drink. Mm. Um I've never gone, oh, do you know what I could do with this toilet paper not smelling like this? Makes my house look like a dump. Um you, you never is never a thing. Now all I smell is that bloody smell. It makes me feel yeah. sick. Yeah. Now all I associate with is being covered in shit. 
And I don't like it <laughs> one bit. Yeah, unless you're leaving bits of toilet paper around the house like potpourri. Yeah. Um, just just don't bother with the scented stuff. If you're going to plump for more expensive toilet paper mm. in order to reach some sort of five pound threshold, which you haven't quite explained why you need to spend five pounds. It's is your it, card. Is it a card it's machine a card thing? machine yeah. thing, yeah. Go for quilted. Yeah, I should have. I don't think there's any quilted in my thing. What you should do is just buy normal, buy yourself a boost. Buy yourself a boost for the morning. Yeah. What are they now? Or buy an Eight actual... pounds? Buy an actual quilt. Yeah. And wipe your ass on that. I was trying to make a joke that I'm no longer a man of the people. Being like, well, what's a boost? What's a, what's a pint of milk? 19? <laughs> 10 pounds? <laughs> How much milk can I get for seven? <laughs> Good. You enjoy all that? <laughs> was that directed at the reader? Uh, I don't know. So I'm looking at you square in the eyes. Ooh, squirty, squirty. You squirty, birty. Ooh, squirty, squirty. You dirty, birty. It's time for the news. This is the news, like we do every single week. What, what's the news? What's the news that's been happening? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, this just in. Girl 20 wed zombie doll called Kelly and is intimate with love of her life. Quotations. Don't interrupt <laughs> the news, Steve. You did air quotes and they can't see the air quotes, Gav. If for you. Felicity Cadillac, 20, married zombie doll Kelly Rossi, who she claims is 37, with her other dolls at the ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> she claims is that like that's the implausible part of this story. Steve, please, the news. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'll I'll back off. The beautiful ceremony, beautiful is in quotation marks, which took place in Tiverton, Rhode Island, USA, cost Felicity five hundred dollars. That's three hundred eighty-eight pounds. Uh, which covered the cost of her own wedding dress, a suit for Kelly, and decorations for the outdoor venue. Alongside four of her family friends, eight of Felicity's other dolls also attended the ceremony to show their support. <laughs> what is this, guys? News! What this, is this? This <laughs> news! It's <laughs> something we do every week. We get, we got to give the people the news. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise, how are they going to know? Uh, Felicity said... Our wedding ceremony was beautiful and perfect, exactly the way I dreamed it would have been. I made sure that the whole wedding was done properly, so it would be as official as possible. And we consummated the marriage afterwards. That's too much information. (laughs) I made sure everything was perfect, because they're all dolls that I control. We've We've got an official quote, more of the official quote. Kelly was the groom as she takes the male role in our relationship. She is a tomboy, so wore a suit. I feel she was most comfortable as the groom. And that's the end of the official quote. This is me back as the newsman. Despite Kelly's (laughs) zombie-like appearance, Felicity claims that she loves her doll deeply and wouldn't change her for the world. Oh, this just in. Another quote. (laughs) She said... I married Kelly, but only because I accept her for who she is. I look past her bloody face, and I don't mind her not having a jaw. (laughs) Now we move on to the discussion part of the news. What is happening? Uh, (laughs) Fucking hell. So this is a woman in Rhode Island, Tiverton, Rhode Island, who has married one of her zombie dolls. She has nine zombie dolls in altogether, but she's only married one of them. Because she's not mad, Steve. Um, (laughs) um, She was bought a bunch of zombie dolls when she was 13. Uh, Now she's 20. And she decided to marry one. Well, I'd like to first congratulate you on the... the uh, you you imitating the Fiona Bruce style of newscasting Mm -hmm. in which she quotes someone and then says, and now this is me, Fiona Bruce, talking again. (laughs) Which uh, was was smooth. Quote time, end now, is what uh, <laughs> I think Brucey says, actually. Uh, I don't I don't want to go and like, 
uh, retread um, South Park's Ghost Pirates or Pirate Ghosts joke, which they did is. very well. Well, is, uh, are they ghosts of pirates? Right. Or are they ghosts who became pirates later in life? So are these zombie dolls, are they dolls that died and were reanimated or dolls of zombies? Dolls of zombie children. Okay. So um, they're all but four foot high. Uh, four foot high. Four foot high at most. Uh, like some of them shorter. They've got limbs. They've got limbs. Are they made of wood? Uh, I don't know. Ish. Do you want to see one? Picture of one? Yes, please. Okay. I've got this all queued up on the screen behind you. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> this is, yeah. This is as close it's to the It's going to be a picture of me and Reese. Okay, here we go. Zombies. Mm-hmm. Oh, hello. There you go. There's the happy couple. That's quite a realistic doll. <laughs> oh my god, it's horrific. It's like The Walking Dead. Describe what you're seeing, sir. Uh, so, on the left yeah. is a zombie doll. <laughs> uh, a, it looks like a 12-year-old... Girl with short black hair. I think that's right. Uh, pale dead eyes. Yeah. Uh, translucent skin and yeah. missing a jaw and a blood spattered face. She's got a nice blue t shirt on, though. Uh, and a nice blue t shirt. A very clean blue t shirt. Yeah, very a, clean. I think. I don't wear colours that are that clean. <laughs> and I'm not a zombie or doll. Right, Gav, that's because the zombie doesn't go out in those colours. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and on the right is the is the happy bride. Yeah, uh, grinning and she's having a nice time. She's very pleased at the fact that she's finally landed <laughs> the big one, <laughs> that elusive boy. So a lot of people sent me this story today. So I started looking. Well, I say started. I spent about forty five minutes uh, just looking through this woman's Facebook. I have a message here because mm-hmm. I mean. I'm sure people can draw their conclusions that I feel like that woman has a lot going on. Mm. Um, But I did start looking around different groups to see, like different other Facebook groups to see what was going on. But it's a very strange story. Um, (laughs) And I love a wedding. So that's, (laughs) I think that's why people were sending it to me. Yeah. Uh, Because like people who've been with us since the beginning will remember the one year I went to 11 weddings, I think. Mm. So we had a lot of wedding features, um, which uh, I know Matt wasn't that massive fan of until he proposed to his lady and started getting married. Then we had a lot more wedding content again. He's wedding mad. Exactly. Um, So I think that's why people were sending me this going, would you go to this wedding? And do you know what? Yes, I would, because I'm a fan of love in whatever form it takes, if that is a man and a woman, man and a man, woman and woman, or woman and zombie woman doll. I want to know who invited the press. <laughs> uh, so I don't think they did. I think basically they've sniffed it out because I think this happened like six months ago. Um, right. But then people have started going mad about it uh, this week for some reason. Um there's, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll uh, tweet out some pictures or something, but this is my favorite picture, uh, which is, <laughs> it's just two of our other dolls. And the caption is, two of the dolls who attended the wedding ceremony in Rhode Island. <laughs> they're, just, they're in like bridesmaids dresses, just watching the yeah. wedding. Um, but also, this is a really good one. Just because, uh, so this is the woman kissing the doll. Uh, mm-hmm. as you think but it's just like this guy in the background he looks like Chucky <laughs> yeah there's a doll in the background looks like Chucky he's not in wedding attire um, wasn't invited <laughs> <laughs> but I saw um, someone tweet about that huh? just going when your ex turns up to your wedding because <laughs> he's just kind of like standing off in the distance in the shadows <laughs> watching it um, which I really like just waiting to shout I object yeah but the thing is, right, so out of all this, because it was like, there's quite a few people. Um, so there was four of her family friends there, human family friends, um, and a bunch, and eight uh, of the other dolls. So it was nine dolls altogether. Yeah. And nine dolls, five humans mm-hmm. at this wedding. So had those dissolved, yeah, I know you're thinking, had those dolls decided to kick off, they're outnumbered. I know, I know that's what you're going to ask. <laughs> there's always... One more human than there are dolls. 
just in case. <laughs> just in case things go awry. <laughs> That's a sorry state of affairs for zombie rights. Yeah. Zombie doll rights in America right now. Well, that's the thing that no one is talking about. No one is... Because everyone's like, oh, should she be allowed to marry this zombie doll? Like, that zombie doll has not had a say in that, have they really? Also, with the zombie doll's parents. I don't know. Who... So, okay. Who... Where did the zombie dolls come from? Uh, um, I've read the article. It says, a creepy shop. <laughs> <laughs> did they, like, march out of the creepy shop? Well, they were purchased. Under their own volition. No, they were purchased by the woman's Kelly, the bride. Uh, they were purchased by her father, now deceased. Purchased by her father? So not by Kelly? No, so they were purchased as a present by Kelly's dad. All of the zombie children. All the zombie children. Not all nine zombie children were purchased as a gift for Kelly, and now her dad's dead. I'm not saying I don't suspect foul play, <laughs> but he was chewed to death. <laughs> It was a massive coincidence. What is? Who was her dad? Uh, I don't know. In my head, it's... Who the, I mean, the question really there was, who the fuck buys a, a crowd of zombie children for their daughter to marry? I also like the fact that he's like, I'll buy three because three's not mental. And then he just gone, well, if you buy three, you might as well buy nine. He's like, that's true. That's absolutely true. He got upsold by that man from the start of the Gremlins. <laughs> Who's like, yeah, do you want a mogwai? Yeah, take him. <laughs> do you want a nine zombie dolls that maybe your um, daughter will someday marry? Uh, maybe him. you thought they were like beanie babies, you know, they were going to be worth a lot of money one day. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I'll tell you what though, Steve. I started having a little look around the internet. People not happy about this. Not happy about it at all. People are so intolerant. People just don't like happiness. They don't like happiness when it's shoved down your throat. <laughs> Especially when it only has half a jaw. Well, as an LGBT person, Gav, <laughs> let me tell you, this kind of wedding riles up all the usual suspects. <laughs> Is there room in LGBT for a Z? <laughs> a Z for zombie. I'm ready to welcome them, Gav. <laughs> um, but people aren't happy. People aren't happy at all. So I started looking around a few Facebook groups to see what what's the... What, what, what's the f general feeling about this? Because whatever you should... I mean, if you type in zombie doll wedding, you're not getting many hits on that. You're going to see exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> um, and they are, as you said, like maybe 11, 12 years old dolls, but they are zombies. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of people sort of calling her a pedophile. Mm -hmm. Lots of people calling her a necrophiliac. A lot of people saying that she's not only a paedophile, but she's also a necrophiliac, and those two things together, no way. Well, yeah, um, <laughs> Indi individually, fine, I think I can come to terms with it. But together, now you've crossed the line, lady. Yeah, do you think she thought, oh, like, paedophilia, no one likes that. Necrophilia, nobody likes that. Put them together, yeah. two big thumbs up. And I mean, it's interracial to boot. They cancel each other out. <laughs> Um, so I started having a look at a few Facebook groups uh, with this story on to see just what the general feeling was and uh, so we got Brenadine on one Facebook says no only is this creepy because they're dolls and look like freaking demons but also because they are same size and build as a child and that just makes everything worse I've changed their names because I'm nice mm -hmm. Diana says, I try not to judge, but this really pisses me off. Maybe because the mix of paedophilia and necrophilia. She's making out with a fake dead kid, for fuck's sake. Where do we draw on the line? <laughs> where, do, where do we draw the line? <laughs> One, fine. Two, no way. <laughs> As I said. Um, <clears throat> so I replied to Diana, wow, you're pretty stupid. Because for a start... Chucking around accusations like paedophile? That's not cool. That zombie looks at least 100 years old. <laughs> Could be a Victorian dead child. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. It is, like, it hasn't got any of the clothes that it was turned into a zombie in. No, he's wearing, like, a Uniqlo t-shirt. Well, he's wearing a tux, because this is where it is. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not a slob, Steve. Um, Diana says, are you kidding? 
that is obviously a child. I said, hmm, pretty sure it's a zombie, Diana. <laughs> I don't want to split ears, but that is obvious. Anyone with half a brain could see that. No zombie, zombie pun intended. Ha 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 ha. Diana says, I don't know what a zombie pun is, but if you support pedophilia, even as a doll, you're not good. <laughs> I don't know what a zombie pun is. <laughs> I say, I was merely saying, Diana, that zombies are known for eating brains. So if a zombie had eaten a bit of your brains, that would leave you with half a brain. But even with half a brain, you should be able to see that she is happily married to a zombie, not a baby. Capiche? <laughs> I'm saying capiche now. Uh, Greg says, technically it's not a zombie or a child, it's a doll. And this is a lot of the arguments that are going on because people are like, look, whatever you think, it, she's not actually fucking a child. She's not married to a child. She's not married to a zombie. She's married to a doll. That's what it is. Mm. Do you remember we, we've... I, I can't find it, right? Because I tried to find it today. Do you remember like we got really hammered one night and we found a video... Of well, what are you going about? What are you about to say, Gav? <laughs> you were like doing that cartoon, like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like pulling on your <laughs> just your <shirt> collar, like, oh, Gav. X day on the idio vey. <laughs> um, we found a video of a woman who was in love. With a fairground ride. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we watched that like a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember. I can't find that now. Mm -hmm. I cannot find that at all. Um, uh, I, I think it's a similar thing. I think there's been a popular Louis Theroux style documentary about this now. In oh, the meantime, she's all cool now. Yeah. There's a woman who um, uh, married a bridge. <laughs> and um, that's sort of brought... I don't know what the name for it is, but like objectophilia, right, into the mainstream. Is that what it is? Objectophilia. I don't think it's objectophilia. There's like a cleverer sounding name than that, but it's like having uh, affections or love for inanimate objects. Oh, I know what you think bridge shagging. Bridge shagophilia. Bridge shagging. Bridge that's shagging. the one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It was cool so, when we were looking at it. Now everyone's yeah, doing it. Yeah, you could say that this who made it popular. <laughs> You could like this this um wanting to fuck a zombie mm. child sex doll could be that. Yeah. By one reading. But I mean it is I mean I'm I'm sort of on the side of this the doll. Woman, this this <laughs> woman and the doll, to be honest. Um who has no say in the matter. Hey, listen. So Greg says technically it's not a zombie or a child, it's a doll. I said exactly a zombie doll. Greg knows. And Diana says, it's quite long, so settle in. This is the same argument people use with hentai featuring elementary-looking kids. It's fictional, and they're actually 30, even though they're wearing a school uniform. The character is four feet tall, flat-chested, has no pubic hair, and is rendered as a child. But because I can control the fictional law, I can make it acceptable to masturbate to this. I don't know if that's her or if that's meant to be the people. Um, <laughs> See, I think she means one can make it acceptable. Yeah. Um, I can draw something that is physically like a baby and say it's immortal. Stop saying I. <laughs> she, she says it. It still looks like a baby and lewd acts with it still look predatory. I was commenting on how the image crosses my line because it still appears as a mix of pedophilia and necrophilia. Two things which I hate. <laughs> Whether she actually molests real children or fucks dead people is not something I am accusing her of. I am commenting on how this is disturbing imagery which still depicts fucked up actions. Absolutely. I think she's I think she's perfectly right. She's raising very valid yeah. concerns and ideas. I know like Joe raised this in a recent podcast yeah. where he went to a shop in Japan. Were they sold sex dolls? By accident. <laughs> oh, no. I seem to have Stumble. just bought everything in the shop. <laughs> yeah, and they, they had some weird dolls that, that looked that looked underage. They were children, but they were uh, imitations of children. Were they zombies, though? They weren't alive. <laughs> so, technically, yes. Um, so It's actually a great philosophical <clears throat> argument. It, it, it's actually yeah. a genuinely good question. Yeah. 
Did you troll this person? You I have. Just, I wasn't, no, I was just <laughs> replying to her. Um, so she says, it's the same argument as people who use hentai. And I said, uh, you look a hentai. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And I was like, there's my line. People running around looking at pictures of Asian kids doing it. Not for me, but you do you, Diana. Diana says, I don't look at hentai. I would never look at that kind of stuff. And I said, look, I'm just saying it freaks me out. <laughs> I've never looked at a full comic or whatever the fuck you look at that shit on. Probably naughty drawings in a bog or something, knowing you, Diana. <laughs> she said, you're not listening. I don't look at that stuff anymore. So you did before this. <laughs> So you said anymore. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't say anymore at all. I went, anymore? So you did before this? <laughs> and she didn't reply. And I said, <clears throat> what is the best hentai to look at? And then she didn't reply. And I said, honestly, like not one that's going to get me arrested or on a list or anything. Just like a normal one with dogs to start or something. Like little dogs to ease me in. Not like a massive Godzilla dog. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she never replied to that. So. <laughs> she replied it saying, Akira. <laughs> Go for it. Anyway, that's the news. <laughs> that's the news. <laughs> that's the news from start to finish. Everything that is going on in the world and what we think about it. <laughs> Great to be kept up to date every week. I love current affairs. Sucking on my peaches like you want and they calling me all the time. I'm running to get my frizzy peaches behind all the time. Regular features. Regular features. Regular features. Oh! And now it's time for Steve's regular feature, Steve's chess master fan sex fiction. Mm. Sexy fan fiction. Nice. Um... There's ever, chess stuff going on in London right now, isn't it? There's always chess stuff going on in London. Chess is, is a multinational global sport. Well, I saw there was um, a thing at, near Holborn, which had, I assume, two of the chess masters, like, done in this amazing art outside, like, close to Holborn Station. And it was like, who will win? Wow, <laughs> this who? one. Or Johnny Chess. Yeah. <laughs> Kasparov or <laughs> Jasparov. <laughs> The two chesses that I know. <laughs> the two titans of the sport facing off at last. I feel like chess would be one of those sports that you could go watch and actually have a brilliant time talking to the people who go there all the time. Like the people who are properly into it. I Yeah, I don't... I, can you... Can you play chess? Can you can you play a game of chess? I could play a game of chess, yeah. yeah. Are you not any, well. Are you any good at it? Absolutely not. Um, no, like, but I know the moves that people that all the bits do. Yeah, the people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know all the moves that the people do. Yeah, uh, I know that all the moves for every bit of thing. Cause I used to have battle chess on the PC. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah, I missed. I used to play that a lot. So because it was like one of the only games I was allowed to play when I was younger. Yeah. I had Chess Master on the Atari ST, Ooh. which I'm going to come back to slightly later uh, okay. in this feature. <laughs> um, one of my favorite uh, Darren Brown tricks yeah. quite early on that he did was um, when he uh, played simultaneously against 12 chess masters yeah. and beat six of them. What? Uh, he played them in a in a ring. They were all, all arranged in a circle, and he'd do one move at a time. He'd walk all the way around, and he'd play one move at a time. And, he'd go. and the way he did it was he played the first Magic, six, we know he does it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, illusions. Yeah. He played uh, six moves against six chess masters. Yeah. And the six moves against the next chess masters. But what he did, it was uh, the, sorry, the starting moves for half of them. Yeah. Let me start this again. Because <laughs> I got confused. Because Darren Brown, he's a confusing guy, right? Yeah. He uses illusions and magic and he perplexes people. So he's got a twin brother um, <laughs> and they've each been living half a life. He uh, played, <laughs> so he played white for six of them and black for the other six. Okay. So for six of them, the chess masters had the first turn. Yes. 
So he played that turn for his first six turns. Oh. And he basically played the six chess masters against the other six chess masters. That is so obvious. I know. When you think about it, that's like, wow, Darren Brown, that's clever. And that's how he, that's how he beat 50% of the chess masters that he played. How did he, what about the, what about the lottery numbers that he guessed? That was a, that was a camera trick. What? Yeah, that was that was dis- that was very disappointing from Darren Brown. He played half of the lottery numbers <laughs> <laughs> against each other. When you say that chess thing, yeah, is uh, as quote from the first episode of Jonathan Creek, mind numbingly banal mm. that you just go. <sighs> it's like Michael Caine, the prestige. Like you don't want to know. You that, don't want to know. Those are often the best. Yeah, absolutely, magic tricks, absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Magic is dead. If Darren, Darren Brown wasn't good looking, he'd be nothing. <laughs> I got a Veruca of him once. <laughs> what? Are you talking about? <laughs> That's a shit magic trick. <laughs> <laughs> That's his worst show yet. I will not be buying the DVD. And Netflix, I'm sure, are not on board. <laughs> have a cadaver, motherfucker. <laughs> Now you've got some fungus. You should wear some socks when you go to the swimming gym. You gonna elaborate on that? I go to the same LA fitness as him. Okay. Yeah, uh, in Marleyburn. And um uh I didn't actually get a Veruca from him. Uh what what happened was I got a Veruca at LA Fitness in Marleyburn right. and I had seen him once in the changing rooms. Uh so I tweeted at him saying, Oi Darren, watch out, there's Verucas at the LA Fitness in Marleyburn. <laughs> And he replied saying, weird advice, but thank you. <laughs> uh, but then deleted the tweet because I think he realized that he'd given up the, the ghost as to where he goes to um, oh. go swimming. And like that's like pap, no, pap knowledge, paparazzi yeah. knowledge that they'd like to know. Or he deleted it because he was the Veruca king. Because maybe he was the Veruca guy. So maybe I did get a fucking Veruca. He from... was the Ver- Veruca king of Marlebone. Yeah, it could have been his Veruca that I got. Jesus. And that's my Darren Brown story. Um, so, did you ever play the game Tomb Raider? Yes. Uh, very popular game. Mm-hmm. Um, and you will know that on the PS1 version of the game... Yes. ...that uh, there was a tutorial level. In her house? You, yeah. Croft yeah. Manor. Mm. And you could traipse around there. You, you could lock the butler in the freezer... Uh, I played it on um, PC, and if you mess around with one of the files, you can make a boobs come out. Well, Gav, that's exactly what I'm about to talk to you about. There was, of course, a famous cheat code, which many people think is a myth. Mm. There's a cheat code on the PS1 to make Lara, Cro- Lara Croft's top fly off and into a wolf's mouth. But um, it's actually true. No. Yeah, no. If you go to the diving board... Uh, you need to do two consecutive backflips, turn around three times, yeah. strafe to the right four times, yeah. take two steps forward, go into the inventory, take out the journal, look at the sky on of Atlantis, <laughs> close the book, dive into the water, mm-hmm. come up and then do the... the um, not the swan dive, but there's sort of a, if you hold your one trigger as you climb up a ledge, she does yeah. quite an elegant leg flip when she uh, gets seen it. up over the edge. Yeah. Do that, and then she'll turn to the camera and say, this You're in Nip Town, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Nip Town, buddy. <laughs> Population <laughs> you. Yeah. And she'll whip her top off. Yeah. All of the polygons dedicated to her body will like move up towards her chest and create some very spherical tits for you to look at. Uh, it's magnificent. But did you know that there was another cheat code that um, came far before that? It, yeah. the, the initial uh, sexy cheat code. I've never heard of this. Uh, it was for the game Chess Master 2000 for the Atari ST. Ooh. And if you've ever played it, Gav, you'll know that on the Atari ST, there's obviously very lengthy loading screens because there was only eight kilobytes of RAM happening. Yeah. And on the loading screen for that, it was uh, the Chess Master's face looking at you over a chessboard. Did he look like a magician? 
You look like Gandalf. Yeah. Yeah. Like at some Silas Marner looking motherfucker. Like just leaning over like. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember yeah. this. I do remember this. Yeah. So there was a cheat code for this as well. If during the loading screen, <laughs> you did the following key combination, Gav. Mm-hmm. Uh, you plugged in a joystick uh, and you went left, left, right, right. Press the button. Yeah. Unplugged the joystick. Plugged it back in again. That overloaded the RAM buffer. What? You tapped Z three times. And, like asleep. And like then... you're asleep. It's like telling the computer you're asleep. <laughs> and then they know, like, Toy Story to come alive. Well, yeah. Well, you would... The chess master would wink at you. Like a three-frame animation. Like, boop, boop, beep, beep, boop. Like, it would, like, he would wink. And that's how you know that you... That he'd activated him. Oh, bloody hell. And then your character... <clears throat> your phone, get your phone out, Gav. It's oh, time yeah. to go. It's, <laughs> it's time to, it's it's time time to go. go. The, the feature's starting now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, would, he would reach over and uh, hand the chess master a big foil cylinder. And the chess master would say, in... Uh, digitized voice yet somehow far beyond the capabilities of the Atari ST <laughs> he would say mmm Spanish food my favorite said chess master as he peeled off the foil of the pork burrito Benito's hat he laughed what funny names they have for restaurants in your dimension it's your move, chess master, I said. You creepy old bastard. Your impertinence will not hasten the game, young man. He snaps. I noticed he was pinching the tip of his bishop, feeling out his next move. Here in the chests Here in the chest dimension, things are a little more, shall we say, old-fashioned people respect their elders i i didn't mean to speak out of turn i replied but the anticipation of your next turn is almost unbearable the old man reclined in his seat and smiled a grain of brown rice tumbled from his mouth past his long beard and down his cloak into a knot of thick grey chest hair. Knight d4 to rook b6, he barked, moving the pieces with his stubby, dry fingers. As he did, his cloak fell wide open. Chess master was entirely naked underneath and erect as a maypole. Looking up, I saw his eyes were locked on mine. He'd seen my furtive glance and was grinning like a cat with a cream-flavoured arsehole. <laughs> Checkmate, he said. Check and mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a it's a different experience when people are reading you things like that and it's just you. <laughs> <laughs> like if it's like two people going and like we're looking at each other going, oh, this is great, isn't it? Yeah. Or if it's three of us, we're like, oh, this is great. And then someone goes, yeah, this is great. And the other person goes, this is great. When it's you staring into, staring your eyes. into my eyes. <laughs> It's like it's a podcast just for me. <laughs> it's okay to have a primal reaction to that, Gav. I thought it was fantastic. Thank you. You won't find that on game FAQs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that I mentioned Battle Chess, which gave you the little in to the chess thing early mm. on in the feature as well. It's good. You don't need a little in when chess masters around. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that I remember that vividly yeah. as well. Um which is Oh, right. He hovers over the board like a, like a yeah. fucking gremlin. Because I guess you're meant to think that you are playing him and he's playing you. Oh, yeah, he was. You were, you were buying the chess master. He's the boy. You, that's what you put your money down. You 
<laughs> you put your money down, you get the chess master coming around. <laughs> you, you pay your money, you take your choice. You take your choice. It's yeah, you get the chess master. <laughs> <laughs> this creepy old Gandalf wizarding motherfucker. <clears throat> you said on the way here you didn't have a feature. Then you turn up with that. Yeah, I wrote that on the overground on the way here. That's between, fantastic. Uh, I was going to say... We already know. Stop saying was... where I live. <laughs> I said earlier in London's West End to try to well, throw you off the scent. The, the one bit of London that the overground doesn't go to. <laughs> yeah. And now everyone's going, wait, West End? Overground is you, you got these pillars, you got these black bars, you got these white pillars. And it's not in the West End. It's not in the West End. And a shop on the corner that sells nice smelling toilet paper. Yeah. And basically... Dropping a pin. <laughs> That's what that was. That's why I, I had to move, Gav. Because <laughs> I lived in Warwick Avenue. I lived on Sherland Road, boys and girls. Oh, there's people now listening to this going, I knew it! I, knew I it. said it, I Gerald! I was there, he's throwing pebbles at the window. <laughs> yeah. And now people know where I live. Brilliant. Yeah. It would be interesting. Like I, You know like when they go, when BuzzFeed does an article, it's like, yes, Britain drawn by an American and it's like just just mad yeah. stuff it would be good if people could send us in drawings of where they think we live that would be we'll do it we'll do a list about it when do I went it. to um, Hollywood hmm. I went to one of those star tours uh, where they drive you around in a little uh, minivan and they show you like um, they showed me where uh, Halle Berry uh, knocked someone over with her car and kept on going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then rather than call the police, she called her agent saying, I've just hit someone with my car. Oh my God. What do I do? Did and you get her, trouble for that? Uh, her agent said, Phone the police, you fucking idiot. It's like, yes. I'm, it's like, this is it's my like, door's bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> so what you need to do is stop your car, hang up the phone, Call the police and do not say that you called me first. Oh my goodness! And it, that all went down in the court. How did case. they know that? I feel like because I was there the other day well, um, when Halle Berry hit no the person. Uh, no, I hit someone <laughs> and I called my agent. <laughs> <laughs> but my agent is just my dog. Yeah. Um, no, but I was there the other day and I did genuinely want to go on one of those. Uh, this the is starters where, this is where the stars are yeah they are really they I are feel really like, good I, I feel like if you're not an, if you're not a dickhead but I feel like you'd just be on a bus with dickheads oh if you go on like one of the big coach ones yeah maybe but if you go on like a like a, six, six people in a car and they drive you around yeah like you can have a, a proper laugh with okay, people good. doing the driving around like because they I think they get straight away what level of interest you have if you're if you're if you're reading yeah yeah like uh pop stars magazine or something yeah. and you want to see something but like it when was you asked genuinely them, can funny we bring our own wine in the car <laughs> <laughs> you're like okay i know i get it come on he drove us up this like meandering cul-de-sac that yeah for about five minutes up into the hills um to the very top of this road and then opened the sunroof and said sorry right, right stand stand on this seat look out the sunroof look over that wall and we could see this mansion just over this like a twelve foot high wall. Yeah, it's like that's Taylor Swift's house there. And it's like it's funny. You think if she wanted privacy, she would have built a higher wall. <laughs> 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 it's like we've driven really out of the way to find that's this. That's really funny. It's, like, it's almost like she wants the attention. <laughs> that's very funny. Yeah, poor Taylor Swift. I think I'm. I think I would be good at that job yeah i think so like i think i said on the other podcast where i went on a little walk around where, uh, around where jack the ripper was doing his killings mm -hmm. i was like i want to do this job but badly and full of lies <laughs> <laughs> get it really <laughs> essentially wrong. because no one is coming away from that being like oh and then we went to um petticoat lane where famously uh, he did 18 roundhouse kicks in a row. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one is telling that story to the people when they go back home. No. So I was just like, you can just sit wherever you want. I was like, I want you to have the best day of your life on this tour. Mm. And I know how to make that happen. And that question's not, lies. <laughs> it's not coming up on pub quizzes or university not. challenge. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's not going to do anyone harm. Yeah, because it's all like 
just pe- things that people have made up at some point. It's made up, never happened. Yeah. Unless it's in the news on regular features, I don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> What do you need for Patreon stuff? Uh, I've got a list. Have you? I don't know if I go that far. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Regular Features Podcast. Gav, thank you so much for allowing me into your... Uh, glittering LCD covered. It's like the it's like the bridge of the Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> I thought you were going to go the other way with it. Like, thank you so much for allowing me into. It's not a home because I don't know if walls that are essentially mud <laughs> can be called a home in this day and age. And uh, you did spit a lot yeah. while I was here. That must be the daub of the wattle and daub <laughs> that forms your home. No, I was going more for like a, a wargaming situation. Oh, like I get you it, are, yeah. you are a, this is There's a hive of um, <clears throat> technological shit happening. Yeah, big time. But yeah, thank you, Gav. And um, right, right. I would also like to thank people for listening today. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like what you what you have heard you can go to patreon.com forward slash regular features and that's how you help us that's how you help us it's amazing we spend your money on um putting the website uh putting the we spend your money on putting the podcast putting the website putting the podcast up and you listen to it because like a lot of uh Gav, you're a- you you are fucking you should be pro at this now. What, so what we you said so what on. you said so far. We well, spent your money on putting the website, and um, you know if, <laughs> the thing. If you've downloaded this, we've put money into it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we also drank some whiskey tonight, and we drank some beer tonight. Yeah, but you paid for that. Oh shit! Yeah. I paid for that whiskey. It's all coming out of my own money. <laughs> you owe me if anything. Uh, but if you like, yeah, regular features. No, patreon.com forward slash regular features. I'm going to shout out some of our most recent patrons. Fantastic. Sachet, Luke Harris, Bailey White, and Gav, you can do the last one. I can't wait. <laughs> Clary Maguire. There we go. That's all of them. That's mad. We've had four new patrons in the last week. We have, we have, we have had more than that, Gav. Jesus. Uh, but I'm saving... The, the two most recent ones for the next episode. So if you have just patreoned us, yeah. then the unlimited thrill of hearing one of us say your name can be yours. Can if I you um, tune in next week? Can I shout out someone who is a longtime patron uh, and he said, When am I going to hear my name uh, read out? And I said, When you cancel. And then rejoin whoa that's not the way to do it Uh, okay really so i mean this is a logistical problem rather than anything else like i would love to and try my best Mm. to uh to to shout out longtime patrons yeah but what a lot of our patrons like to do and this is just a suggestion is they upgrade their pledge from whatever amount that may be yeah to double that plus one Okay. Or some larger amount, and then it then it it pops their name to the top of the list, and ah. then, it, then it goes into my little thing that goes into your little thing, my little Google Doc that I use to to read that that stuff out. Well, so do it, that. But cool. also, Cami Tillman, you're a good guy. Well, he uh, gets it for free, doesn't he? Well, he gets it now because <laughs> because uh, I like him. That's and the he's thank good you look, for good looking fella. Everyone who, who supports us on the Patreon, um, you are effing awesome. We literally couldn't and wouldn't do this without you. And shouldn't. And shouldn't. Tune in next week. Well, there'll be more of us. And it will be worse. Because of it. Yeah. I think they hold us back, Gav. <laughs> Cero.